Dr. Josephine G. Figueroa, Education Program Supervisor in Technology and Livelihood Education from Schools Division of Angeles City. It is my pleasure to have you in this webinar series brought to you by Philippine Organization of TLE APP TVL Educators. I feel so great of having you virtually. Let us all praise God that we are here together to face in the brave new normal. Indeed, we are together in the brave new normal education. Again, I am happy and grateful to have you in this webinar series. It is always my pleasure to share my knowledge and experience with anyone. Welcome to re my topic, Refocusing APP TLE TVL Learning Modalities for Continuity of Learning. Our objective for this session, identify the different learning modalities, explain the different learning modalities, and decide the learning modalities suited to our learners. Before I present my entire presentation, I would like to acknowledge my sources of my slides. Dr. Lourdes G. De La Cruz, our Curriculum Implementation Division Chief, Dr. Jocelyn D. R. Andaya, the Director of Beery Curriculum Learning Delivery, Dr. Just Dado Antonio, DepEd Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, and our DepEd Secretary, Dr. Leonor Magtolis Briones. Let us start with the overall goal of DepEd. We aim to sustain the delivery quality, accessible, relevant, and liberating basic education services for all school age, youngsters in the midst of COVID-19, emergency via flexible learning options. The impact of COVID-19 on education is felt worldwide. About 1.1 billion learners are affected by the pandemic with 123 countrywide closures. A study shows that long vacation of student breaks the rhythm of instruction, leads to forgetting, and requires a significant amount of review material when they return to school. Secretary Leonor Magtolis Brones addressed the nation with her statements. Teaching children how to accept and adjust to changes that are happening around them. We have to start with the children to give them courage, to give them initiative, and help them look at the problem realistically and continually have hope and confidence that we will overcome this. President Rodrigo R. Duterte addressed to Secretary Leonor Magtolis Brones. I am impressed with the simplicity of the program and I believe that all that you have said is really visible. Radio kung walang TV and all of these things. I believe you have a very workable program and I support you. Should you require any help from any of the departments, feel free to communicate with them. On the question of funding, I will, so to speak, scrape the bottom of the barrel. Kung wala na tayong pera, ilaan natin sa edukasyon ang mga bata. The president himself expressed the admiration of the program of DepEd in learning delivery. On the question of funding, he said he will scrape the barrel. 
Indeed, the government puts high priority to education amidst the pandemic. President's direction I will not allow the opening of classes na dikit-dikit ang mga bata. Para sa akin, bakuna muna. And kapag andyan ng bakuna, okay na. The direction of the president, I intentionally put on this on my slide because this is where we will base our context when we will talk about the learning modality. Deaf Ed is one of the precedents of the safety for all our children. The Department of Education is one the president in his non-negotiable commitment for health and safety of our learners, teachers, and staff. It is the first and foremost important principle of our basic education learning continuity plan or BELCP which details learning opportunity in the time of, co of COVID-19. No face-to-face -face until safe. How will education take place? How will schools deliver instruction? The bottom line, no face-to-face -face until safe. Having this non-negotiable condition there are two important questions to answer which was i cited while ago which were i cited while ago how will the education take place and how the schools deliver instruction so long edukalidad marks the reshaping of education in the country months before the covid 19 attack the OUZI Deped Office of Undersecretary Curriculum and Instruction started reviewing the curriculum with the banner program KITE. KITE stands for the K-12 Review and Update. I, Improvement of Learning in Environment. T, Teacher Upskilling and Reskilling Through the Modified Professional Development Program. And letter E, engagement of all the stakeholders for support and collaboration. This is initiated by our secretary, Leonor Magtolis Briones. The K-12 curriculum review is not just meant to fulfill one provisions of the Republic Act 10533, but to review the curriculum, but is also part of her commitment to ensure quality, relevant and liberating education for all what was done in the review the review focuses on the articulation within and across the learning areas to identify gaps issues concerns across the learning areas and grade levels specifically the review covers of the following Mapping of essential desirable learning competencies within the curriculum. Identification of the prerequisite knowledge and skills needed to prepare the students for essential learning competencies. And analysis of interconnectedness of prerequisite knowledge and skills among the learning competencies for each subject area. Still we are on the review process. Essential learning competencies are defined as what the students need, considerable, indispensable, in teaching and learning process to building the skills to equip learners subsequent grade levels and subsequently for lifelong learners. On the other hand, desirable learning competencies were defined as what may enhance education but may not be necessarily in building foundational skills. These are the characteristics of the essential learning competencies. Was provided to help the reviewers decide which among of the learning competencies are deemed most important. What makes a learning competency essential? 
characteristics of learning competencies as follows they are essentials if if it is aligned to national state or local standard framework it's example we have scientifically literate filipinos essential if it connects content to higher concepts across the content areas learning competencies essential if it is applicable to real life situation learning competency is essential if the students left the school after this grade if it would be important for them to have this competence above many others learning competency is essential if it wouldn't be expected the most students would learn this through their parents or communities if it is not taught in school. These characteristics are based on the U.S. Developed Competency Validation Rubric, which is intended to assure all learning competencies can reach the highest level and quality and comparability across the schools. This is from, the resource of this is from the new Hamspar Department of Education in 2012. Although adaptions were made for relevance in the Philippine context, with the challenges on learning delivery posed by COVID-19, the Bureau of Curriculum Development accelerated the identification of the essential learning competencies and streamlined this further in the most learning competencies, which we call now as the MILKs. And determining the criteria of the selection of the most essential learning competencies the descriptor is endurance this was considered to be the primary determining factor a learning competency is considered enduring if it remains with the learners long after a test or unit of study is completed or if it is useful beyond a single test or unit of study. Examples such as learning competencies include research skills, reading comprehension, writing, map reading, hypothesis testing, which are essentials in many professions and in everyday life. Our resource uh, here is uh, Reeves 2002, Many and Horrell in 2014. The process of identifying the MILKs. So we have here the K-12 curriculum or the CG. And then we have the Essential Learning Competencies or ALCS. Most learning com Essential Learning Competencies or the MILKs. This is the decision as to retain, merge, drop, or rephrase the learning competencies. Part of the process was deciding whether a learning competency is to be retained, merged, draft, or rephrased. Generally, a learning competency was retained if it satisfies the endurance criterion which greatly contributes to life long learning and is proper and its prerequisite skill to the next grade level two or more learning competencies are merged or clustered into one comprehensive learning competency if they have the same objective or learning intention draft if to a specific and articulation is like that learning objective deemed appropriate to be introduced in an earlier quarter or grade level or moved to a later quarter or grade level recurring and subsumed in another learning competency and learning competency is rephrased to make the learning competency be more concise As a result, this is the dramatic decrease in the number of competencies. So as we notice on the table, 
English learning area is the most subject which has the highest learning competencies which were competencies were merged, reduced, clustered, or trapped. It is in 93%. While the lowest learning competencies that were merged, dropped, or rephrased, we have here the TLE 15%. Most important thing to remember about MILK MILK is not a departure of the K-12 curriculum We still have the standard the content or the standard which we have the content standard the performance standard are re, uh, retained Focus on the attainment of the 21st century the codes and tags of materials are retained for merged and retained competencies. So remember, it is not a departure of the K-12 curriculum, especially for the TLE. Reshaping education. How are we going to reshape our education? Schools are hereby instructed to refer to the MILKs in creating learning activity sheets, self-learning modules, and other instructional materials. Moreover, schools are enjoined to adhere the content of the mouse and refrain from creating a new list of learning competencies from different learning areas. It is so clear in this slide that is called that our school should create their learning activity sheets, self-learning modules, and other instructional materials that will help to facilitate the teaching and learning process. However, we are also reminded that we still have to adhere the we have to adhere the contents of the milk and we have to refrain from creating a new list of learning competencies from any kind of learning area with the considerable reduction in the number of LCs is the time allotment for learning areas reduced this is another question all learning areas will still be taken by the learners in all grade levels but with the streamlined competencies this is to ensure that learning outcomes are still achieved even in this pandemic. It is noted in principle the time allocated per subject on a daily basis did not change. This means that schools need to consider this aspect in employing various, del various delivery schemes. Let us now have a better understanding on what is, a what is all about learning modalities. Learning modalities can be defined as the way the students use their senses to learn. A student may have the strengths in one or more modalities of learning. Educators often aim to differentiate their instruction and to ensure that the student can learn through their preferred modality. However, many scholars argue that there is no evidence that humans have inbuilt learning styles because we, ha we know that all our learners is uh, they are that every learner is unique and we have to give them a, a unique learning delivery mode or learning modality that is suited according to their learning modalities okay now we have four types of learning modalities and learning modalities for our learners for our learners visual learners the visual learners learn through watching demonstration graphs and images visual notes or visual taking note taking and graphic organizers while auditory learners learn through taking things through listening to stories conversation verbal repetition of information and for the kinesthetic learners, these learners learn through interpretative dance, sports, 
role play, moving about their learning environment. Now, for the type of uh, tactile learners, the tactile learners learn through physical touch, moving, building, and manipulating objects, and simultaneously doodling while listening. That's why when you see students writing, when you are discussing, and when you are online dis in your online discussion, and you are doing something, then let that students do the, uh, do do that. What is the type of learning modalities? Because that's one of way of his type of or style of learning. Now, for the visual learners. The visual learners prefer through images, graphic students who are visual and are greatly at visual presentations and learning through images. A strength of the learners, they are good at identifying patterns in images. They can still differences between colors, shapes, very well upon the eyesight. They are often very neat and organized with their bookmark with or with their bookwork because they appreciate balance imaginary and they are very good in reading maps then of course if our learners have their own strength then they also have their weaknesses now what weaknesses for the visual learners they may struggle with the big chunks of text they would prefer to learn by watching video or reading graph they struggle with audio only text such as podcast they may be easily distracted from learning by movement of colors now how are we going to apply this in teaching so if you're a teacher and you have this kind of students so we have this uh m p e p m p -E -P, okay so model learning graph this uh, guided practice and demonstration provide graphs and images rather than articles to read encourage the students to take well organized notes and provide graphic organizers such as mind maps for the students how about their strength the strength of the auditory learners they are very good in pattern music they are appreciate uh, they appreciate storytelling such as uh as, as a form of teaching they are skilled at explaining things in simple language they can follow verbal direction with ease and can quickly hear patterns in language make them good at learning foreign languages for the auditory learners prefer learn through listening of course this is an auditory students who are auditory learners would do well learning through listening but struggle in silence how about the weaknesses for the auditory learners so these are the different weaknesses for our auditory auditory learners they can be distracted by changes in sounds around them a struggle to learn in silence such as through a standardized test because they are auditory and they may also struggle in reading books would benefit them with audio books instead now how are we going to apply in teaching and what you are going to do if you are a teaching if you are a teacher with this kind of students well teach through storytelling Ask the students to verbal repeat information on instruction to you. Provide a past podcast for homework and encourage the conversation and social learning scenarios. Okay, now for the kinesthetic learning learners, I mean, this kinesthetic learning is learning that takes place through bodily movements. Students who are kinesthetic learn like be uh, learn uh, like things by physical okay so what are the strengths of the kinesthetic learners can express themselves very well through dance move through dance and movements are strong sports people kinesthetic learners they like to learn by moving about their learning space 
and they are very good in forest school educational environment so again if our learners if our kinesthetic learners have their own strengths they also have their weaknesses and which you should not do for them so they struggle to stay still during tests or quiet time have trouble in paying attention to books and then other passive learning scenarios and need physical rather than theoretical experiences to understand ideas so how are we going to teach this kind of learners encourage them to do the role playing during learning allow your students to move around the classroom or at their home and go outside to let extra work okay so how about the tactile learners how are how what is their style of their learning modality so the tactile learners can learn through touch they understand things best when they can physically touch them they like to use fine motor skills to feel texture get an understanding of the size of the things and so on they are different to kinesthetic learners because they are not focused on moving their bodies but simply touching and manipulating the things they are working with how about their strength what are the strengths of our learners this type of learner which is the tactile learners they learn best through active learners strategies that are popular approaches such as problem posing education they learn through play very well they can build manipulate manipulate things with their hand very well they appreciate practical and learning scenarios and where they actually do something while learning so how about the weaknesses of our, of this type of learners so they struggle with passive learning such as reading books or listening to their teachers such as through the banking model education they also struggle with theoretical explanations such as they actually get a chance to apply theoretical ideas in real life situation so how are we going to apply this in teaching bring you have to bring many props into the classroom or you have to sh if you are teaching in online you have to show them uh, uh, many props to your to, to, in order for them to learn allow them to touch and play with them so since that you could not join with them then let their parents uh, let them borrow your props and let uh, give instruction to your to the parents on how they are going to use those props that you have given to them allow the students to do them while they listen to you so because that's their best way of learning your lesson that's their modality in learning their lesson now learning delivery modality so among of those styles or the learning modalities of our learners now what ano ano yung mga maaring gamitin ng learning modalities in the school year 2020-2021 so these are the most frequently asked questions para sa pagbubukas ng klase Papapasukin ba ang mga bata sa eskwelahan at hindi, uh, kahit hindi pa napupuksa ang virus? Alisunod sa Deped Order number 07, Series 2020 at sa pagbibigay ng uh, prioridad sa kagawaran ng edukasyon at kapakanan ng kalusugan ng mga guro at mag-aaral, hindi magiging face to face ang pag-aaral sa pagbubukas ng klase. Maliwana po yan as I have discussed while ago that there will be no face to face until it is safe. Sino ang magtuturo sa mga bata kung hindi face to face? Mahalaga ang papel ng mga magulang o guardian ng estudyante habang pinatutupad ang distance learning. Sila ay magiging gabay ng ating mga learners na magiging posible at patuloy sa kanilang pagkatuto.
So this is how we see the importance and support of our parents to their learners. Now, changing the nature of education. As a learner, what will you do with this kind of nature of our education? Okay? So the learners is... Uh, they are designers of their knowledge. They are the designers of their knowledge, realities, and interest. As a teacher, the teacher should be innovators, designers of learning resource and guide. That's why in uh, as, uh, the presentation a while ago, it is stated or it is emphasized that the teacher should make their uh, activity sheets which are suited you should have to design the activity sheets suited according to the learning modalities of their students this should be this should serve as a guide to their students and of course to the parents who will coach their learners while they are at home now for the assessment the assessment should be varied less traditional assessment what could a relevant what could a relevant and responsive learning delivery look like? Now, no face to face until safe. We keep repeating on this. We keep repeating that there is no face to face until safe. We can still provide learning opportunities to our students without requiring them to come to school. Distance learning is consistent with the president's preference that we do not send our children to school until safe to do so. Distance learning, we have the online distance learning or ODL. We also have modular distance learning or MDL and we have the radio TV or radio based instructions or ATV or RBI. Lessons will be delivered to the students in the comfort and safety to their homes through the following methods. So the printed or digital modules delivered to their homes for the students pick up by their parents at designated places within the coordinated schedules. For the online learning resource such as DepEd Commons and other learning references and other uh, learning management systems that can be used by other schools, okay? So we also have the radio or tele uh, television based instruction. Sa blended or distance learning modalities, ang mga aralin ay ayahatid sa mga mag-aaral sa kanilang tahanan sa pamamagitan ng Una, pagkalimbag o printed modules or office digital format na ayahatid sa mga mag-aaral sa kanilang tahanan o kukunin ng magulang o kasama sa tahanan ang mga kung saan itinalagang lugar sa ligtas na pamamaraan. Pangalawa, online learning resources sa pamamagitan ng DepEd, Commons at ibang learning management systems. At pangatlo, pagtuturo sa pamamagitan ng telebisyon at radio. Sa ngayon, meron na po tayong pinalalabas sa mga TV, nagkakameron na po sila ng simulation on how we are going to do the radio-based instruction, television-based instruction, and other, dis uh, and other learning modalities that will be used for this school year 2020-2021. Now, for the distance learning, regardless of the type of distance learning teaching, with the teachers serve as facilitators or the para-teacher shall Number one, monitor the learner's progress. So it is very important that, uh, uh, the, the, that a teacher should always monitor the learner's progress to know if the learners are learning. The teachers also, also should be open for consultation and there should be uh, one to one uh, on one consultation or conference so that you may know if your learners is having progress on the learning modality that you have given to our learners then it is very important that you have to provide for uh provide learning feedback 
And for the learning, distance learning, sa modular distance learning, ang mga mag-aral ay bibigyan pa ulit-ulit po natin ito sinasabi kasi uh, there are some parents who are... Uh, who worry uh, on their child education because they do not have the gadget, they do not have the laptop. Again, there's no need to worry because our uh, our education, our uh, the central office is doing something in order that there could be no difficulty in learning. There should be the the learning should always continue. And one way is we have the distance, uh, modular distance learning. Pinuulit po natin ito, sa modular distance learning, ang mga mag-aaral ay bibigyan ng mga module at ibang iba, iba't ibang materialis ang kanyang pag-aaralan sa loob ng kanilang tahanan. Ang mga ito ay maaaring printed or digital na isisave po ito sa flash drive. Kung mayroon pong uh, gadget, yung ating mag-aaral ay maaari niyo po itong i-open kahit wala po silang internet. So, in the modular distance learning, printed material learning, hindi kinakailangan na magkameron pa ng gadget. Ang mga mag-aaral ay bibigyan ng imprintang module, uh, module ang kanilang pag-aaralan at sasagutin sa loob ng kanilang tahanan. Mata magtatalaga din ang pamunuan ng paaralan kung saan kukunin itong mga module at kung anong oras sa pamamagitan ng ligtas na paraan. Ang kukuha po nito ay ang kanila mga parents or guardian. So, how about the digital modular learning? Ay, ito ay para naman sa may mga gadget. Ngayon, kung nawala naman silang internet, may gadget pero wala silang internet. So, isisave po ito sa flash drive. Ang mga mag-aaral ay bibigyan ng digital files na nakaloob doon sa flash drive or CD na kanilang pag-aaralan at sasagutin gamit ang kanilang gadgets or ang kanilang laptop. Magtatalaga ulit ang pamunuan ng, mga, ng paaralan kung saan ito kukunin at anong oras kukunin ng mga magulang sa ligtas na pamamaraan. Now, so we have the modular distance learning. This is the process. The teacher take the active role in monitoring the learning progress so parents as a co-facilitators now the teacher provide the support remediation enhancement of enrichment and you could not provide an uh, remediation unless you are not going to do feedbacking unless you are not going to provide monitoring the progress of our learners that's the only way that the teacher can provide support and remediation enhancement and then complete the set of learning packages the self-learning modules and other study guides and uh, or the activity sheets which was uh, done by the teacher so we can also provide the learner materials or some te textbooks that could be used by our learners now in the modular distance learning the self-learning modules are designed to provide learners with understanding the key concepts sufficient practice to master the learning contents and flexibility on fish, uh, finishing each module so uh, the learning through modular distance uh, distance learning so the learners accomplish the module activities complete an individual uh, learning plan connect with the teacher for feedback uh, schedule the time and day through the messenger or text so for the younger learners the parents are uh, use the learning guide and supervise the learners interaction with the materials communications with the teacher can be done through messenger phone and other social media or social network now the parents or guardian accomplish the learning support checklist now this is the process of the modular distance learning which was conducted in the simulation at uh, division of nabotas headed by uh director malcolm so this is it 
So we have the distribution of the learning materials or the modules in a very safe manner. They have the schedule uh, when they are going when the parents or guardian uh, pick the materials and then give it to the learners that will be uh, accomplished within the week and uh, after that the parents will return it to the teacher for feedbacking and checking of the materials to know that if there will be a progress of learning for our learners so the, for the modular distance learner the printed modules refer to competency specific materials that cover the key elements of a lesson from motivation instruction to assessment Printed modules are prepared for learners who have limited access or have no absolutely access to the internet or no digital device. How printed modules can be used. So the teacher distribute the modules at the start of the month. The parents will guide the learners as they read through the module. They can also consult with the teachers via SMS, social networks, or any other way of communication. During the week, the parents will take note which strategies work and what support that they still need for the modular learners. The teacher now will arrange to collect the outputs the students in every week. Now, these are the possible requirements for the modular learning. For public and private schools, a statement of undertaking signed by the school head administrators that the learning materials in print or e-copy courseware for those computer only for each learning area in different grade levels are available ready for the school year. Now, for private, uh, for private schools, Detailed discussion and the curricula implementation including a statement that if a com a complies with the minimum requirements of DepEd in terms of learning competencies, time allotment, assessment of learning, and promotion and relation. Number three, a statement of undertaking the tuition and, tuition and other fees are properly consulted with the with the parents and last number four is the omnibus certificate of compliance to the standard set by DepEd for modular distance learning now on the online distance learning which is the second kind of learning modality delivery we have uh, sa online distance learning ang mga mag-aaral ay bibigyan ng materyales o kakayahan maka punta o access ng mga pinag-uukulang source ng mga gagamitin na gadget na mayroon silang internet connection. Ang online distance learning can be a synchronous online distance learning and also it can be synchronous distance learning. Now, anong pagkakaiba ng asynchronous online distance learning and synchronous distance uh, online learning? When we say online dis, uh, synchronous online distance learning, sabay-sabay ang mga mag-aaral sa kanilang guro na mag-online o uh, upang magkamayroon ng talakayan. Ang mga mag-aaral uh, may uh, kanyang mga kakla at kanyang mga kaklase at ang kanyang guro ang magkakamayroon ng interaction sa virtual classroom. It can be also a Google Classroom or any kind of platform which was uh, scheduled or which was prepared for our learners. At sabay-sibay silang uh, sa kanilang schedule, uh, schedule na ginawa ng teacher. Sila ay maaaring magtalakayan sa pamamagitan ng video conferencing, teleconferencing, live chatting, and live streaming lecture. So that is for the synchronous online learning uh, distance learning. How about 
asynchronous online distance learning. Sino ang pwedeng maging uh, sino ang pwedeng matuto o mag uh, magkameron o magtuto o mabibigyan ng synchronous online distance learning at sino naman ang pwedeng bigyan ng asynchronous online distance learning? At una, uh, let us have understanding of what is asynchronous dist online distance learning. Asynchronous um Online distance learning, mayroon sariling schedule ang isang mag-aaral. Ito ay nakabatay sa uh, kung saan, kung, kung, kung kailan at niya kaya at kung gaano kadalas ang kanyang pag-online. Sa kanyang sariling schedule, ang mag-aaral ay mag-online upang pag-aralan ng materyales na binigay ng kanyang guro. Ang kanyang paggawa ng requirements ay nakabatay din sa kanyang sariling schedule. Ang komunikasyon ay maari sa discussion on boards or social media kung saan na maari mag-iwan ng mensahe uh, o pagpasa ng gawa nito ng anumang oras. Ang asynchronous distance learning ay maari lamang ibigay ito sa mga estudyante na they are independent learning. So, ito ang estudyante ang pipili ng kanyang sariling schedule. Pipili siya kung kailan niya gagawin at uh, magbibigay na lang po siya ng mensahe o mag na lang kung kailan siya magsusumite ng kanyang uh, pinag-aralan o kanyang mga gawain na pinagagawa ng teacher. So, that is the difference between the asynchronous the online distance learning and synchronous distance online uh, online distance learning. So, ang online distance learning materials are accessible via S, uh, SLM uploaded in DepEd Commons or DepEd uh, recognized learning management systems just like Edmodo, Google Classroom, Moodle, and Schoology. These are other and other open educational resources or OER. The digital device access to the internet is a must. The school meets uh, the requirement set. There should be a laptop, mobile phone, and any device. So, availability of uh, online resources and the uh, qualification and of in having the online resources and online distance learners. I mean, online distance learning or ODL. Definitely, the teacher should have the basic in computer skills and online teaching methodology. That's why it is a must that the teacher should upskill and reskill the professional development. It is really a must for us to have to uh, re -up, to upskill and reskill in order that we can go with the flow in the, of this kind of education for the new normal that we have that is brought to us by the by COVID-19. Now, online distance learning is delivered through online the commons and other learning uh, management systems. Assumptions and requirements, students and teachers have access to the internet. Students and teachers have laptops, desktop, mobile phones, student and uh, chosen an uh, uh, online platform. In considerations for this, uh, choosing the online distance learning is that the expenses for delivery online uh, learning support for data and electricity. Number of household members sharing the devices, laptop or desktop. So what, how is, how, what is the process? In the module distance learning, we have the process. How about the process in the online distance learning? So we have the instruction. The teacher uploads the instructional materials. Example, the video, the reading, a chosen platform which my students could help in a part to, could help Good, uh, which the students may study for a particular day. Now, the teachers should set up the discussion with the guide questions the students can discuss about the lesson. Now, activity worksheets will be uploaded to, for the students to work on independently. Take note of the word independently. The teacher should be available for consultation. So, for the work, should be done. Uh, 
um, independently meaning it should be done by the students without having help of our parents it should not be the parents who will answer but what we are going to build in this uh, pandemic in this uh, new normal education is what we have to build a culture of trust otherwise we will always be doubting to our students and parents with their worksheets so we have to build a culture of trust in this kind of new normal education now this screen time exposure of course we are not going to expose our children all day with the online distance learning so for the preschool for the preschool we have 60 minutes only per day uh kindergarten uh to grade two we have 90 minutes per day grade three to grade five 120 minutes per day and grade six to grade eight is 180 minutes per day and grade 9 to grade 12 is 270 minutes per day the students engagement can be broken down to 5 to 15 minutes long activity depending on their age the decision uh, begin uh, with the learners in mind the decision in color uh, calibrating the curriculum and assessment Priority, uh, priorities depend on the keen understanding of the learners and how they learn optimizing sustained attention of the learning is important hence reasonable and logical combinations of technologies and uh, learning modalities are needed curriculum leaders as well students engagement in the remote learning areas as follows as the preschools uh, which I have mentioned that 60 minutes for kindergarten to grade 90 minutes and uh, and so on so we are we have given the time now the education resilience learning continuity plan of the UP College of the education indicates that the recommendations for the maximum time of the students engagement in remote learning also world health organization prescribed the screen time exposure limit for our learners in different age groups this shall be considered in the guidelines to be released by DepEd. that's why it is very important that we should have we should have a blended learn uh, distance learning it is not just uh online distance learning but we have to blend it with modular distance learning because we have to consider the screen time exposure of our learners now another is another type of educate um uh, another type of learning modalities is the re uh, educational uh, radio or tv based instruction and radio or tv based instruction ay pagkakaroon ng channel o programa sa radio at telebisyon na nakalaan sa pagbibigay ng mga aralin. Ang mga ito ay kagabay sa distance learning na pagpapaabot sa mga bata sa kanilang aralin, lalo na ang mga walang internet. So, what are the possibles in uh, this uh, possible requirements? Let's go back, sorry. Uh, the possible requirements when you are going to conduct the online distance learning so a statement undertaken signed by the school head or the administrator that the courseware or for each learning area different grade levels are available ready for the school year a statement of the ensures accessibility of e-learning platforms for use admin teacher and learners parents so detailed discussions of the curricula uh, implementation including the statement that is uh, that uh, it complies with the minimum requirement of DepEd in terms of learning promotion and retentions for private school only a statement undertaking intuition intuition and other fees are properly consulted with the parents and other uh, with the parents this is also for the private school omnibus certificate on compliance with the standards set by DepEd online and distance learning now so there could be a certification 
that the school is capable to offer the online uh, learning there should be an IT infrastructure with technology support with the internet service provider web hosting service provider and the school either own the learning management system or outsourced online okay so the disclosure essential of e-learning applications whether the school will use the available applications like ms office 365 Moodle, google suite for education and others outsource of local developed okay now go back to educational television or radio based instruction so this is what we are going to do so there should be a lesson a, a video lesson for the tv or radio uh, based instruction radio uh, script or atv packages this includes the supervision and guidance of our learners facilitator or para teacher the conceptualize as an interactive approach so tv radio set supplemented with the learners worksheets and activity sheets the educational uh, radio tv instructions which was also simulated in angela city so you can uh, visit an lrmds uh, facebook page of angela city lrmds uh, facebook page for the uh, which we had simulated the uh, re educational radio uh, tv based instruction so for the educational tv the modality description delivery network tv shows a fixed schedule now this schedule should be coordinated with parents and the teachers so the support learning uh, modules from the teachers parents or guardians and doing the activities the content the schedule are aligned according to the curriculum so if, if uh, this will be tv uh, if, if since that we will be having a blended learning uh, we have, will be having the modular learning for a modular learning delivery mode a mo modality for the learners who do not have an internet in uh we do not have access in the internet and if we choose uh, you, you can also have online learning uh online distance learning uh, modality if our learners have an access to internet and if uh, we can also have our educational tv or radio based instruction so how about homeschooling Homeschooling ay isang alternative delivery mode kung saan ang magulang o guardian o tutor na dumaan sa training ng otorizadong mag, para magturo sa bata. This, or we call this as facilitator of learning. Imbes na sa classroom uh, teacher habang ito ay wala sa loob ng paaralan. Now, homeschooling, we are, who are, um, who can be, uh, who, 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 are students can have uh, homeschooling according to the DepEd memorandum 216 series 1997 the homeschooling uh, caters to various types of learning learners at risk dropping out learners with a special educational needs learners incapable of reporting to school regular because of medical condition learners in an emergency situation or conflict areas Learners who had unpleasant experience in regular school. Learners who are first to drop due to uh, some circumstances. Learners of parents whose job requires them to travel. Learners whose studies are interrupted due to relocation of parents within uh, the Philippines or OFWs. And lastly, children of parents who have uh who by choice wished wished to have their children be educated at home so these are the possible requirements in uh atv again let us go back to the atv uh, atv or rbi the memorandum under so these are the requirements memorandum are taken for, for the private school uh, DepEd, CO, RO, SDO with television network or radio station. A statement undertaken signed by the school head administrators that the radio, uh, radio or tape 
based learning materials for its uh, learning area in different uh, grade levels are available and ready for the school year as well as the print or e-copy of the courseware whichever is applicable to complement the tv or radio based instruction for private this uh discussion and curricula implementation including the statement that it complies with the minimum requirements of the DepEd in terms of learning competencies time allotment assessment of learning and promotion retention for private schools only now for the homeschooling requirement so there should be submission of a letter of intent addressed to the regional office submission of implementing plan that describes the target learners for the homeschooling program a certification of the school coordinator a, sub a submission of the training plan for parents and certification of availability of appropriate learning materials and resources consistent with the delivery modality that will be adopted for the school year now regions division and school contextualized learning strategies uh, strategy and learning delivery modalities our schools under the supervision of the guidance of our region divisions are authorized to decide on the specific learning modalities deemed appropriate in their context and consistent with the COVID-19 guidelines and regulations. According to Deputy Secretary, we have a great trust in our field officials, school leaders, and teachers in their resilience, adaptability, and resourcefulness in delivering instruction. Can a school make adjustment or changes? The learning delivery modality can be changed anytime when deemed necessary and possible. Number one basis is health and uh, physical distancing protocols and other guidelines set in their respective areas changes in health and health status of the learners the learners assessment results show the learners is not doing well in learning modality chosen and when there are indications and report of negligence and abuse validated through home visitations how about learning uh resources so i've been mentioned uh, this could not just be uh deped commons also can be can be uh, reached by the private schools not only in public so they are also open for private schools so for the learning resources we have the official learning resource repository management of DepEd. so how says quality assured instructional tools which is ready to print a standalone software platform is built only for learning resources management the ecosystem cannot be upgraded or uh, emerging technologies for the deaf ed uh, commons which been uh, lots of millions of our learners already using this uh deaf ed commons so the official online delivery platform to support the blended learning modalities houses interactive gamified merging technologies materials such as ebooks widgets mobile phones and html5 Linkage to a learning learning management system or LMS and classroom management system or CMS platform. Um, a lot of teachers are asking this. Are teachers required to make a DLL in this uh, pandemic? Learning plan. Learning plan is a tool that operalizes the implementation of learning modalities or modality in school weekly home learning tasks serve as guide for learners as well as parents or 
learning facilitators on what they are expected to accomplish within the specified time. Guidelines to gather the templates will be uh, released uh, soon by our by DepEd. So this is the sample of weekly home learning tasks that will be prepared by a teacher. Not uh, no longer the DLL, but sample weekly learning task. So this is this sample is for grade seven for grade seven so we have few, uh, five columns so the first column indicates day and time the second column indicate learning area the third column indicate uh, learning competency the fourth column the learning task and delivery or mode of delivery so for the day and time it indicates when monday 9.30 to 11.30 is uh, for mathematics and the learning competency will indicate that a uh, type or the kind of or a particular the specified learning competency that will be learned in math or if it is in TLE let's say by after 1.30 to uh, 12.30 it is a uh, TLE, APP or TVL and then you write the learning competency that will be learned for that particular day and uh, what are the learning tasks? What are the learning tasks that the learner should do? And what delivery modes are you going to apply? So let's say for example here in delivery mode or mode of delivery, send outputs, Google Classroom, account provided by the teacher, or any kind of platform recommended by the recommended by school. So have the parent a hand in hand output with their teacher in school. So we have this. Uh, learning task and delivery mode so and we also have a sample individual monitoring plan how you are going to monitor the progress of our learners so this will be attached on when you deliver uh, the modules when you deliver the modules if, uh, if it is a modular distance learning and you also have to attach this if you wish to uh, use the online distance learning modality so this is the monitoring plan the individual monitoring plan we have six columns and the first column we, uh, tells the learning area on the second column what are it uh, ask you the learner it tells the learners uh, needs what are the different learner needs and then what diff uh, intervention strategies provided and then monitoring date when you have monitored and then the learner status there is there any significant progress is there a significant progress and what are the mastery that the learners were uh, mastered so you are going to write there the learner is not making significant progress in a timely manner an intervention of strategies are needed so our need to revise you can only do this my dear teachers if you will be able to monitor the learners progress so it is very important for us to monitor the learners progress to know for us teachers if the learning learners are doing well on the learning modality that we have given to them or the learning style of the if our strategy is suited for the learning style or learning modality of our learners now how about assessment how about assessment to ensure the quality of learning, classroom assessment, namely formative assessment and uh, summative assessment, shall be conducted by the teachers to track and measure the learner's progress and to adjust instruction accordingly. Paper-based offline and online format assessment shall be conducted whichever is appropriate in the context of the learner so i'm giving you is a uh, suggested platforms or resources mechanism so they uh, use a virtual classroom just like uh, google classroom edmodo Scology. they use a web uh, enhanced learning activities free resources open to open uh 
Educational Resources or OER, Access to LR Portal, and Access to DepEd Commons. Now, we have free access and observance of the intellectual property rights to some of the educational sites or resources. The following is uh, free access. You can access the BrainPop, Curiosity Stream, Tinker, OutSchool, Udemy, iReady, Best Academy for uh, Math, Can Academy, Create Bug, Discover Education, the YouTube channels, Cross Course Kids, Science uh, Channel, Sci Chow Kids, National Geographic, Free School Kids. Geographic Focus, The Brain Scoop, The Learn uh, Kids Learning uh, Tubes, Geek Kirk Diaries, uh, Kinder Kids Learning Tubes, My Like Science, uh, Soul Pancake, Online Board Games, and E Library. To have a better understanding or clear eye view on how we deliver the learning modalities. The Division of Navotas conducted a simulation and you are free to watch this link. This, uh, you will have a better understanding on how we deliver the learning modalities for the school year 2020 and 2021. So it is uh, posted on the screen on where you are going to find the simulations of the learning deliveries for school year 2020-2021. And to end my presentation, which is the COVID-19 challenge in education, according to Secretary Leonor Magdalis Briones, education cannot wait. Children cannot wait. We need to find ways for learning to continue. And choosing to be here in attending the webinar series brought to us by a Philippine organization in TLE, APP, TVL, educators is already one way in, to, for you to continue learning. And I really appreciate your presence virtually. With that, thank you so much and God bless.